Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of communication engineering. Today's topic is quantizer. In this video, I will discuss what is the function of a quantizer, what is its use and how many types of quantization are there. Let us begin. To start with, first let us understand and revise the concept of quantization. What happens in the case of the communication system, sometimes we are available with the analog signal, but we require digital signal for a particular application. It means we have to convert the available analog signal into the digital signal. It means we have to convert continuous time signal in the form of the digits. Right? So, the digitization of analog signal, it involves rounding of the values which are approximately equal to the analog values. And analog to digital converters that is ADC perform the function of creating a series of digital values out of the given analog signal. And the signal which is to be converted into a digital that has to undergo a process for the sampling and quantization means first samples of analog signal must be done then there is a process of quantization and the quantization of analog signal is done by discretizing the signal with a number of quantization levels means among how many levels we are quantizing it. So to understand how a signal is being converted from analog to digital first let us understand let us consider an analog signal. You can see in this particular diagram, this is the analog signal which is continuous in nature. So first sampling is to be done. So for that particular purpose, some samples is to be taken at the different different instant of time. Let us say this is at T1, this is at T2, at T3. So first samples have to be taken out at the different instants of time. Now you can see here the signal that is not it is not longer a continuous function of time but here now after sampling it is discrete time signal because the magnitude of each sample it is being taken according to the continuous range here the magnitude is this here the magnitude is this this one now there is a difficulty because after sampling the process of the quantization is being taken and in quantization process the total amplitude range in which the signal may occupy. Here you can see the signal is being occupied in between this to this point. So if this is the range let us say MP and this is MA right. So in this particular range signal is being occupied and this entire range is being divided into a number of levels. So to accomplish this here the signal which is let us say original signal is xt this original signal which lies in this particular range it is partitioned into l different levels so accordingly you can calculate what is the magnitude of each and every level right now the sample is approximated or rounded off to the nearest quantized level as you can see in this particular diagram since each sample is now approximated to one of the L numbers means L is the total numbers out of these many it may be approximated to any one level any one number therefore you can say that the information is digitized. So this is the basic concept of a digitization. Now let us talk about the quantizer. What is quantizer? What is its purpose? So the quality of quantizer, see the, how many levels are being available in the quantization process that could be calculated, the number of levels could be increased and decreased accordingly it is going to impact the quality of a signal. So the quality of quantizer output it depends upon the number of quantization levels used right and the discrete amplitude of the quantized output it is known as representation level or reconstruction level and the spacing between the two adjacent representation level is known as a quantum 
or step size. Step size is a commonly used term which represents or which is being defined as the spacing between the two representation levels, between the two reconstruction levels. If we talk about the quantization process, so basically quantization process can be classified into two categories, uniform quantization and non-uniform quantization. Uniform quantization is a quantization where a step size remains same throughout the input range. For the entire input range, here the step size is same, means uniformly spaced. While non-uniform quantization, it is a type of quantization where a step size varied according to the input signal values. Means here quantization levels are unequal. It varies according to the input values. And uniform quantization, it may be again of two types, mid-tread type and mid-rise type. Mid-tread type, the first one. It is also known as a symmetric quantizer and while the second type which is the mid-rise type that is also the symmetric quantizer. Right? How to differentiate in between the two? Mid-tread type because here origin lies in the middle of tread of the staircase like graph. I will show you in the detail and the second one which is the mid-rise type here this mid-rise type here origin lies in the middle of the rising part of the staircase like graph. Let us see how to draw the mid-red and mid-rise type. Here you can see the first diagram first one you can see over mid-rise type and here you must observe that the origin this is the point, the origin, it lies in the middle of the rising part of the staircase. So, this is the rising part of the staircase. While the second one which is the mid tread type, here you can see the origin lies in the middle of the tread of, this is the middle of the tread of the staircase like graph. And you can note that in both the cases, whether we are talking about mid-tread type or mid-rise type of uniform quantization, they are symmetric about the origin, right? In both the cases, in diagram number 1 and 2, in both the cases, you can see it is symmetrical about the origin. So, these are the points which I have discussed that I have listed down over here. Now, let us discuss about the working principle of the quantizer. So, to understand the working principle of a uniform quantization, let us consider a uniform quantizer of mid-rise type. You can see over here, the A is the mid-rise type and this shows the transfer characteristic of a quantizer and the diagram or the waveform B, it shows the variation of quantization error with respect to the input. Since the diagram A shows the transfer characteristic, here you can see the input is the quantizer input. It is being taken along the x-axis and it is x times x of n of t s and the output is taken along y-axis. This is what x q, q denotes the quantized level n of t s. So, here let us assume that the input to the quantizer which is x n t s it varies from minus 4 delta to 4 delta. It means that the peak to peak value of x n t s that will be in between minus 4 delta to 4 delta and delta is what? Delta is the step size. We have already discussed what is a step size. It means input can take any value in between minus 4 delta to 4 delta. Now, the fixed digit levels which are available at what? You can see the fixed digit levels are available at delta by 2, 3 delta by 2, 5 delta by 2, minus delta by 2, minus 3 delta by 2 accordingly. So, these levels are available at the quantizer because of its characteristic. So, from this particular diagram, the figure A, you can see when 
x of n t s this is 4 delta then what is the value of x q means output that is at this particular point we are talking about when input is this the output value that corresponds to 7 delta by 2 similarly if input is minus 4 delta now the output is what minus 7 by 2 right so from here you can say that you can observe that the maximum quantization error it would be what plus minus delta by 2 so from here we can conclude that the quantization error it can be expressed as what output minus input x q quantized value minus the quantizer input here this epsilon it represents the quantization error so epsilon is actually the quantization error now when we say you can observe over here when input x n t s when this is 0 what happened over here quantizer means for this particular instant quantizer will assign any one of the nearest binary level it may be delta by 2 or minus delta by 2 right similarly you can observe from the figure if x of n t s it is in between delta and 2 delta then what is output output is in between delta and 2 delta I am talking about this particular value here so output is what output is 3 delta by 2 similarly when it is in between minus delta and minus 2 delta then output is what minus 3 delta by 2 so from here it means we can say maximum quantization error will be what plus minus delta by 2 right so maximum quantization error is plus minus delta by 2 alternatively we can say maximum quantization error is given by mod of delta by 2 because it varies from minus delta by 2 plus delta by 2 so epsilon maximum maximum quantization error that is mod of delta by 2 so in this way you can calculate what is the maximum quantization error and you can explain the working principle and the similarly the thing you are observing over here see this is what you can see what is the variation quantizer error this varies from minus delta by 2 to sorry plus delta by 2 to minus delta by 2 in between these values Thank you so much for watching this video.